What's up, X and YouTube? Matt A here. Today, well, you already know what we're going to talk about because you saw the thumbnail, you saw the introduction, and you saw the caption and title and all of that stuff. So you already know what we're going to talk about today. That's right, the Rev 8. Okay, Bethesda finally put land vehicles into Starfield. Now I have to eat my words here for a second because I was one of the people when Starfield first came out and everyone was asking for land vehicles. I was one of the first people to say, Bethesda doesn't do land vehicles, right? They won't put vehicles in the game. The jetpack was kind of like having a horse. That's what they're going to do, right? Because Bethesda is, you know, designed to be a ground, ground based game where you're walking around. And we see that because in early Bethesda games, well, in like Fallout and Fallout New Vegas, you didn't even have a sprint. But obviously game design changes over time and technically you could go really fast and dagger fall so i think that's where they got the inspiration from so yes they do have the rev 8 they do have the land vehicle the land vehicle in there so should i start with the boring stuff and go to the update list or just get right into right into the rev 8. All right, we're gonna get right into the Rev 8. I took it for a spin around. I took it to multiple different planets. All right, I drove it through Jemison, which was kind of interesting to see the way, I wanted to see the way the NPCs reacted, to see the collision, to see, hey, can I run into these people? Can, it, can you kill people with it? Yes. The NPCs react to it, yes. If you run one of them over, it will trigger hostilities. So you have to be careful when you're driving the Rev 8 around Jemison. Now, one thing it does prove in Starfield, when I was riding around Jemison, I actually went from the spaceport all the way up to the UC Mast area, right? I went all the way up. That proves you don't need loading screens in Starfield. A lot of loading screens in Starfield are unnecessary you don't even need. So I'm not even sure why they have them. You don't need them. You know, I'm not sure why the tram, tram system couldn't just be a physical tram system like in Cyberpunk 2077. There's no loading screens, but when you click on it and you're going to the next area, there is a loading screen. That part doesn't make too much sense to me. All right, because I was able to get from the spaceport all the way up to the top of the thing just using the Rev 8, right? Just using the Rev 8. So I'm not really sure what that, what all of that was about. So I'm not really sure why there are so many loading screens inside the cities when you could clearly get from one place to another. That leads me into my next thing. The Rev 8 is great for exploring to getting to places you normally couldn't go. It boosts higher than normal jetpack, and I'm pretty sure the boost skill affects it in some way. I'm pretty sure it does because my boost meter was refilling really quick. So after I boost it, basically it refills really quick. Now you can boost up, you can boost forward, right? And you can kind of boost around the circle. You can maneuver around just like a buggy. It reminds me a little bit about the Mass Effect Mako. They probably got some inspiration from that. Now let's talk about the design. The design of the buggy is amazing. The details are amazing everything's everything's physical everything is directly path the tires are real they have real collisions the collision is good when you land in water it has real physics the rover does respond the rev 8 does respond to gravity it does respond to the environment to the sand to glass like when i was on the building the uc building and i was on glass you could tell it was more slippery than when i'm on sand when i'm on snow you could tell the difference in terrain So that means they did program a few different B 
behaviors into the way the terrain behaves, the way the rover behaves, on, you know, the way the rover behaves on different terrains, different gravities. The lower the gravity, the kind you kind of go slower, but your boost is a little bit faster. And obviously you boost higher in the lower gravity, just like if you were walking around. That's going to lead me into some negatives, but let's let's keep on the good things. The good things is it does add a, new, a whole new dynamic way of approaching things. It does add a way of getting from point A to point B to getting to POI, POIs. You can use your scanner when you're driving around, which is great because, you know, you can just drive around and hit the scanner and hit all of your resources and things like that. Like I said, it does pretty well in the water. It looks pretty good in the water. All of the shadows are perfect. All of the collisions are good. All of the physical parts are actually moving when you're driving around. The lights look good. Everything about it is designed pretty well, which I'm impressed because they're very thorough with it. It's not janky. Well, a little bit of Bethesda jank, and you'll see what I'm talking about. But for the most part, everything is, is physically animated and, and path. You know what I mean? I was afraid it would be just a visual like uh, trick. I was afraid it would be one of those visual tricks like we see in Star Wars Outlaws. Now, if you go to Star Wars Outlaws and just like the werewolf in Skyrim, they create this, uh, you know, they pan out to like an, uh, you know, 120 degree POV to make it look like you're going faster, but you're really not. And you'll notice this with the werewolf in Skyrim, and you'll notice this in Star Wars Outlaws. I noticed it right away. It's an old trick from the 2010s, right, where they scale out really far back, and because it's a wide angle, it looks like things are going faster out your peripheral vision. They don't do that in this, which is great. First person view is a little restrictive. You can't really see what the heck is going on. That is to be expected. It does have a windshield. The windshield will reflect. It will move in real time. So there is a physical windshield, you know, and that does move and that does affect it in real time. Now, there aren't different modes. There isn't like a four by four mode or any kind of mode like that. They probably will add more stuff later. They probably will add customization later. But right now, everything is really polished the way it is. The vanilla experience is super polished. And that was probably their priority. They probably wanted to polish everything that they could. And they got it. They did it. They nailed it pretty well. They did a really good job with this. Right? That's probably what their goal was. They wanted to get it fully fleshed out, fully functional, fully fluid, which is an oddity for Bethesda. Usually they kind of screw this stuff up. Usually they're like, they put stuff in the game and it's not ready. This was ready. This was fully ready, fully flushed out. No customization that I know of. I, I looked around, searched for it. I didn't see any yet. Probably will be added. And guess what? The coolest thing is we are going to get mods for this thing soon. Believe it. Keep an eye on creations because we will get some mods. Believe it. Believe that we will. That will be good when we get some mods. That will be kind of cool. I don't know what the hell they're going to put on it. Probably better weapons, which so far, I don't know about upgrading the weapons. I think the laser trait, I think you need the laser trait to boost the weapons. I have no laser training, so my lasers did, you know, crap all for damage, right? They didn't do very much damage, but all of the, all of the traits that I have did play a role just if I was using a gun. So you'll see that I get crits. Uh, you know, the, the thermal recognition comes on like I have in my traits. So all of your traits apply to the vehicle, your boost, your weapons training, all of that stuff applies to the vehicle. Your Everything applies to it. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. It's basically an extension of yourself. And this is, this is the horse of the game. You know, the jetpack wasn't the horse of the game. This is the horse of the game. So yes, it feels more like a Bethesda game now, even though it has a vehicle because it's basically like your horse. So those are all the good things. Okay. Now here are some questionable things. We're going to go to a question, a middle ground. Not many people do that, right? We're going to go to the middle ground. Questionable. Does it actually get to POIs faster? Uh, that depends. It does 
and a dozen at the same time. So you can technically get to POIs faster depending on what kind of terrain is in your way. What do I mean by that? Well, if you're on a planet and there's a bunch of little rocks or a bunch of little things in your way, it's going to jag the rover in all kinds of different directions because of the physics. So you'll hit like this little rock and bounce sideways and it's very frustrating and it can delay you getting to the POI. But from, my, from what I've tested, it does get to the POI a bit faster. So there's a question in there. Does Is it really worth it to get to the POIs or not? Is that really worth it? As far as the health of the rover goes, this is also questionable. I haven't really seen it get damaged at all. And when it did, when it did get damaged, it got repaired very quickly. And when you're in the rover, you do get hit by blaster, by gunfire, etc., depending on where they hit you, right? So if they hit the windshield, it's not going to hit you. You know how it is. It has very good collision. Like I said, it's pinpoint precise collision. That part is good. The questionable part is the, the vehicle life, you know, the life of the vehicle. And you'll see it's at 100. And it, when it does drop down, it instantly goes back up. So we'll have to see and, and keep an eye on that and take a look at that and, you know, see how that's going. Uh, now we have to get into the bad, all right? And now we have to get into the bad, right? I kind of alluded to this, but now we're getting into some of the bad things about the Rover. It's a little janky when you're driving around. It hits rocks. The rocks affect the physics of it a little too much. Basically, what I'm saying is the physics are turned up too high on it. It feels like it's affected by the environment a little too much all right we're gonna do a ross thing a little too much we got to keep it down just a little bit right want to keep it turn it down just a couple of notches couple of notches turn it down because when you're driving you're hitting rocks it, you're barely touching the rocks and your rover is like shooting all around right and it makes it very frustrating you do get to pois faster but when you're driving it, it's like half frustration, halfway fun. So when you're driving around, it's 50% frustrating and 50% fun. That's the problem. When you're driving around, it's 50% frustrating and 50% fun. There's no customization yet. I'm not gonna ding it too much for that, right? And so far, I haven't seen anything that really plays into the life of the vehicle or the health of the vehicle. Basically, you can run into anything jump off of anything, skyrocket off of anything, and it hasn't affected the vehicle very much. The other negative is, it, this is a little bit superficial, but the rover, the Rev-8 just appears out of nowhere. So every time you land, it just appears out of nowhere. There's no like new cargo bay. There's no new ship cargo bay that you have to add. That's the one big thing that I think they messed up on for the realism of it is that it should have had like a cargo bay, a new ship module. And then you could see your rover stored in your ship and it affects your weight, it affects your speed and it affects your engines, right? It actually affects the mass of your ship. That's one thing that it's missing. It's just missing that little bit of extra pizzazz, okay? Just that extra ship module that makes it, you know, believable. Right now, it just pops up out of nowhere. Getting in and out, of, this is another little cosmetic thing. These are little nitpick things, right? Getting in and out of it is a little janky. It, it's a Bethesda game, you know, nothing too bad. The animations are perfect getting in and out. That part's good. So not too many negatives. So those are the positives. Those are the questionables. And those are the negatives. Not too much, right? Overall, it's a good update. It's a step in the right direction. And we can tell Bethesda is in this for the long haul. I am loving all of these updates. We know when Shattered Space comes out and they have all of those POIs, all of the developments, all handcrafted on one planet, they know what we want. They're going to give it to us. Starfield, the vanilla game, was a blank canvas for Bethesda. They're going to have years and years and years of updates, right? They're going to have years of DLCs and, and the mod kit, the creation club is pretty cool. Now there's so many mods to play around with, right? So overall, this is a great step. In the, this is a step in the right direction. Starfield in retrospect is going to be one of the best games Bethesda has. Okay, this is the first game in a series. Keep in mind, 
over the years and years and years, it's going to develop into a, you know, a half a billion dollar franchise, billion dollar franchise like Skyrim, like Fallout. This is going places, okay? Re- remember, people criticize it a little bit, you know, for being the weakest Bethesda, you know, IP. That's only because it's the first one. You know, the first Elder Scrolls was pretty weak. The first Fallout 3 was, you know, it wasn't, didn't meet up to Oblivion, right? Because it didn't have that fan base yet. So don't worry. This is going places. This is going far. Love the direction. Can't wait for Shattered Space. Next video is going to be on Gamescom. I will see you next time. Thanks for liking and subscribing. I am going to have videos daily soon. I took some time off work. I created a schedule for myself and I'm getting my format down. As you can see, my background and sound is much better. Thanks for sticking with me. It's always hard to get into the creator field. Thanks for subscribe, subscribing. If you watch this video to the end, subscribe, please. I'll see you next time. Thank you.